Hey friends, so one month ago I put out a challenge to the entire community. I wanted to see people showing me their best lessons in how to do the windmill, and today we are going to see what y'all delivered. Drex here from DrexFactor.com, and today we are drilling into my October October tutorial challenge and I'm issuing my November tutorial challenge as well. Before we dive in, I just want to give a shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these awesome companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So I really wasn't sure how this challenge was going to go when I issued it last month. I didn't know if people were going to want to participate. I didn't know if people were going to be interested in doing it because uh, definitely the idea of creating a competition like this around uh, tutorial content is something I hadn't seen done before, but I was excited to try out. In the end, three people sent me tutorial videos and one sent me a very long document that was definitely not about windmills, but I will still link to it down in the description. But I'm going to take you all through uh, each of those three tutorials that I was sent, and I'm going to talk about both what I think were some of the things that these creators did that were really awesome, as well as uh, some things that I think uh, are places where they could improve in the future. So our first example here is from Don McCrink. Let's dive in. Hmm. So first up, hey, nice hey, t-shirt. Hmm. I'm also digging on the striped sock poi because uh, good, good. That that definitely reminds me of my early days making videos too. Cool. So good to demo the move up front. That way people know exactly what they've signed up for and everything. I think that's really, really important when you create a tutorial. It's kind of like a promise to your viewers what you're going to be teaching them. And basically, you're going to take this and it's going to be like you're brushing your hair. I'm going to show you the motion. Mm -hmm. Just gonna go like this. Gonna oh, that's kind of an interesting way of, of teaching it right in here, that you're kind of giving people a little really, like kinesthetic a tool to work with. That's okay, that's, that's a very Nick Woolsey way of teaching something. It's the same motion as the right hand, but you still gotta learn the left hand. So I'd be a little careful at this point because it's really easy based upon the motion that you're doing with your left hand to put this into together opposites instead of split time same direction. Um, I get what you were going for there though, and it, and it is good to train each of the hands individually. Um, you just got to make sure that you put that asterisk in there for your viewers so that they know that you're working in split time same there. So if you want to pause the video, learn the right hand and left hand or vice versa, and then you can pause the video now. And then now I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my point out a little bit. Cool. Having people practice while they pause the video and everything, that's a great idea. Uh, I, I actually kind of like the way you paste that. This hand's going to follow. Um, but there's always a lead hand, no matter what trick, whether you're stalling it and you get into it, you could do a quick stall and then just what you want to do is really keep it close to the head. You don't want to get it really too far away. Yeah, I think b right before we got to this point, I, I might have given people a chance to practice just doing the reel, the uh, the back and forth motion, the brushing motion, with their poi, not just with their hands. And I don't, I don't know if that was kind of like insinuated there, and I just missed it. But um, yeah, it, it, before putting the two hands together, I would, I, me personally, I would have suggested that people do that. But um, it, it's still the the way that you structured this in terms of starting with the hand and then, uh, but getting the pull involved and then having uh, both of the hands involved is is really really solid. That is, um, I can't remember the term for it, but basically uh, pedagogy, I, I believe it is. Uh, I think that's a really solid pedagogy for for putting together a windmill. And essentially you have the windmill. Ooh, that's the light, but it didn't crack. Uh, hope this helped you out a little bit. I too once broke a, uh, a light doing my tutorials in the early days. 
Cool. So that was overall really good, Don. You look very, very comfortable on camera, and I really admire the way you structured this lesson. Uh, for all of you out there watching, uh, I've got a link to go check out Don down in the description so that you can learn uh, Don's technique for putting together a windmill tube. All right, so now let's check out a tutorial from Kimmy Cherry. She is uh, Camp Poi Girl 713 on Instagram. And uh, she actually sent me two different versions of her tutorial, a short one and a long one. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and uh, review the uh, long one because I'm partial to longer form videos myself. Hi. Hi. I'm Kimmy Cherry. I'm also Camp Poi Girl 713. Uh. Okay, so first thing I'm going to uh, grab onto here, um, on I absolutely adore that little name tag graphic you have over on the left side of the screen. It really fits uh, your colorful and kind of eclectic personality and everything, and I think it's really cool that you did that. Um, you may notice I too tend to put a name tag at the beginning of my videos, and it's good because it helps your audience identify uh, who they're interacting with and everything. Maybe they found you via search, and it gives them some uh, kind of insight into your personality and what they're going to be getting from you. Bye. What I used to do when I was belly dancing was I had a bail. Mm, okay, so and you learned how to do this from uh, but I did performing a uh, corkscrew and then and bringing that it vertically. It that is actually how cool. I first learned it as well. Um, I had a really rough time of it though because like switching between those either. planes was not terribly day. intuitive for me. But so let's see how you teach that. I believe if you learn how to move your poi individually, you eventually can work your way sideways instead of up and down. Okay, so, so you're basically having people do a reel with, with one, one hand while the other one stays in front. Okay. I mean, that, that, that's cool. I mean, um, that's definitely a good way well, to simple. get people working with both poi it. in a way that is relatively low impact. Oh, goodness. Okay, so... Um, we just got a very large block of text on the screen, which um, again is in that awesome uh, motion graphics box thing and everything, which I love the graphic. Um, there's a lot of text here though. If it were if it were me doing this, what I might do is actually like show video of myself doing this trick in slow-mo and pull up each like individual idea in this in like the corner or the side or something like that. Um, cause I, I appreciate actually the written instructions. I think that's good because, um, there are definitely some people that have an easier time reading an idea and kind of getting into it and everything. My one quibble here is that it's covering up the footage of your actual spinning. So like in terms of like kind of reinforcing the, the knowledge and everything, if you're going to have like text that you're giving people and everything, it really should tie into um, content that people can see. Um, you're, ta you're asking them to start by spinning their point in split time same direction, that they see footage of somebody spinning in, in split time same direction in there and everything. Um, again, I think that reinforcing a lesson with text is great and I love your motion graphics here. Um, but yeah, I really like making sure that people can still see um, what you're doing as that text pops up, I think is really, really crucial for reinforcing that lesson. Hey, there's the slow-mo. Excellent. No, and I think it's cool that you're showing that in flow towards the end of the video as well. You know, that gives people some additional content to kind of inspire them as to what can I do with this windmill and everything. So that's that's really cool. Cool. So, uh, Kimmy Cherry, thank you so much for that wonderful tutorial and keep up the good work. Um, one thing I really do want to emphasize in all this is that at times it might seem like I'm being a little critical. And part of the reason for that is I want to help give people tips that took me way too long to learn myself. So. Um, I, I, I hope you keep on making those and I hope you uh, do another tutorial for the coming month because I would love to see where you take some of these ideas uh, if, you've, uh, if, if you go and make another tutorial, yeah? All right, and the final tutorial that we're going to be looking at this month is by Stakanova. Uh, she does tutorials on Instagram under the name One Day Spin. And I will 100% confess that uh, 
I actually put out the tutorial challenge for windmills specifically because I know that she has an awesome method for teaching it and I was really hoping that she would put together one this month. So uh, happily, that's exactly what happened. Hello guys, my name is Katya and today I'm Oh goodness, that English is dubbed over. Okay, so this is going to be interesting. I want to thank Drex for keep doing this and now drop one of the poi behind your head, behind your back and then turn this way while continuing to keep your poi behind the head and then throw the poi forward. And so part of what I love so much about this is it's actually a really similar method to how uh, you teach tuck turns to people. And I love the fact that she's starting with just like one hand at a time um, and like getting people to do the basic motion and that it is something that is pretty intuitive whether you have been spinning poi for two years or two months. So I also have to admit that the like English dub is actually distracting me a lot less than I thought it would. So cool, this works. And I'm really glad that you've done this in English so that it can find an audience beyond, uh, beyond Russia. And doing the big half a circle, drop the poi behind the head. So do this. Cool. And doing the other hand now. Like we do before. And throw the poi behind your back forward. And when the poi passes the highest point of the beat, now, now, get ready to turn. So turn doing the big half. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So normally when I teach reels in split time, same direction, um, I only have people pay attention to the lead poi. I almost never talk very much about what the poi that's following is doing. And what's really, really interesting about the way you're doing this tutorial is that you're making it as important to talk about how the turn works for the following hand. I throw forward and so, that's all. If you get this, uh, so you're ready to combine both hands. So take poi in both hands, start spinning, First right hand. Cool. So now we're working up to two hands. Awesome. Poi is in the lowest point of the beat. It's split time spinning. So you need exactly. And I really love that you're talking about split time as you're demonstrating it to reinforce that knowledge. Spinning the same through the boy in the right hand behind the hand first, and then the boy in the left hand. Stop here for a moment. Turn like we did before, and now again through the right boy first forward, and then the left one. It is very import important the right Cool, and I love it how you're chaining these together. Spin here for turn again, spin in reverse, right, left, mm -hmm. turn, right. Cool, left. and I love how you're building up speed with it now too, so, so now that you're, you're building up to something that's more step. smooth. That's fantastic. Behind the head, turn, and here through it forward and do the big circle in front of you through a gate. Cool. So here's what I love about what you just did. Um, we started off doing this with just like little simple uh, steps and everything. And now that we have changed something very slightly about it, um, you're now going back and having people just do it one hand at a time once again um, so that they can get used to that before they try and put the two hands together. That's fantastic. Just do the big circle in front of you and stop the boy behind nice. the head. Throw it forward and stop it behind yeah. the head. And, and I love how you're speeding it up with just the one hand so people can see what it's meant to look like. In the left. It will be really good for you if you will do this all near the wall in front of you. Just stand near the wall like me. And That's why you're doing it in front of the wall. It's to help people keep it in plane. That's slick. I didn't catch that at first. That's a great idea. Nicely done. Please try to do the stop behind the head and the big circles in front. One other thing I just want to point out here really quick that is really, really effective in how Stakhanova uh, did this tutorial is that the left hand and right hand poi are different colors. Um, a lot of my older tutorials use this technique a lot and I find it's really helpful because it really reinforces to people that are watching your video um, just how different the movements are with uh, left and the right hand. Try to stand straight and continue to stop the boy behind the head. Nice. Turn the torso. Picking up speed with the two hands. 
and now just turning the upper body instead of the whole body. Position behind the head, and then try to do the circles in front of you less. And I think it's great that people can see how the beats behind your head are shifting from stalls to being uh, more circles and reels. And then we keep our hands up high. Phenomenal. Straight your arms, and I hope that you get this trick. And see you in the next videos. Outstanding. Um, so clearly, that was just a phenomenal uh, tutorial from top to bottom. Um, from one thing, the pedagogy there is fantastic. I love how you broke down the drills uh, hand by hand, and then put the pieces together. And then, as soon as you changed the motion that you're having people do, you had them go right back to using only one hand at a time to get used to it and everything. Um, I love this method for teaching the windmill. I really, really wish that uh, I had known this method when I was creating my own tutorials on windmills. Um, so I, I'm so happy now that this is committed to video and everything. I am going to say that uh, Stakanova, you are my pick for the tutorial of the month. It, that, that was really fantastic. Um, if I could give one and only one piece of constructive criticism on this, it would be that um, it, it, it's kind of funny because um, I think that uh, the other two tutorials this month did do this, where they started off with a demonstration of the trick before teaching it to people, so people knew what it was that they were going to learn in the lesson. Um, and that's a small thing and everything, and, by, and, and the, the, overall the tutorial is fantastic, but if you wanted to go that extra 10% and everything, that would be the place to go. Cool. So thank you to all three of you for uh, showing me those wonderful tutorials this month. And uh, of course, I also want to see more tutorials coming up this coming month. Uh, I would love to see folks out there do tutorials on flowers. Could be in-spin, could be anti-spin, could be both, but I want to see your methods for teaching flowers. And what I'm really hoping is going to come out of this is now that y'all have seen uh, me talking about uh, these videos, that they give you some ideas of how to make your own videos. And I also really hope that some of the people that created tutorials this past month will come back and uh, do tutorials again uh, this coming month in November so that we can see how people grow and, and kind of integrate those lessons as, as they do so. So, those tutorials on flowers are due to my inbox, Drex, at drexfactor.com, no later than November 25th. I cannot wait to see them. And of course, I've got links to all of these different videos down in the description. And for those of you out there watching, go check out these tutorials and let me know what you like about them. Maybe you noticed something that I didn't. If you dug this video and you'd like to see more like it in the future, please hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. That guarantees that you will see all of my videos when they come out. And finally, a huge shout out to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. They are the reason that this video and all the videos on my channel exist. If you would like to sign up to become a supporter on Patreon, head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. You get early access to all of my content as well as a say in what topics I pursue in the future. So head on over there, uh, please and thank you, and I will see you all soon. Peace.